there's no way it it just sucks when it gets to a point to where there's no way to to change what happened there's no way for me to bring this girl back it just sucks when it gets to the point to where you can't do anything in August of 2017, XXX Tentacion released his first studio album, 17. In terms of marketing, the album had no radio promotion or even much press coverage at all, but it still found a way to become a commercial success. It debuted at number two on the Billboard Hot 200 and went double platinum. This album followed the huge success of his hype song, Look At Me. And most people anticipated that the theme of this album would match the high energy and chaos from his biggest hit at that time. But instead, what we got on 17 was totally different. The album was somber and dark, with most tracks having reoccurring topics like depression and death. In this video, we'll be focusing in on one of the tracks featured on the album that has a haunting backstory, Jocelyn Flores. This tragic story takes place in May of 2017, which is only three months before the album 17 was released. Jocelyn Flores was a 16-year-old girl from Cleveland, Ohio. X flew her down to Florida to meet in person and to stay with him, but during the trip, she was found dead. The cause of death was determined to be suicide. Before we get into this video, if you or a loved one is struggling with suicidal thoughts, please reach out for help and share how you're feeling. There are free resources available on the screen. There is hope, and these feelings are not forever. Now let's rewind and talk about how the young rapper and Jocelyn Flores would connect in the first place and look at some of the events leading up to the tragedy. According to X's sworn police statement, he first messaged Jocelyn on May 2, 2017, just 11 days before her death. Jocelyn had built up a significant social media following and could be considered an early micro-influencer. X saw a picture of her on Twitter and thought she looked pretty, so he DM'd her. The two messaged back and forth before exchanging numbers and would soon begin to FaceTime with each other. It was during a FaceTime call that X proposed that she should come down to visit him. Jocelyn passed the phone to her mother and he asked for her mom's permission to purchase her a ticket, and she agreed. It seemed like a unique opportunity and adventure for Jocelyn. She'd get the chance to take a trip to Florida, relax, have some fun, and just take a breather. Nine days later, the 16-year-old landed in Florida. X had invited another girl to stay with him that same weekend. She was identified in the police report only as Zoe. By all accounts, the first night passed without any incident, although tension started to build between the two girls. At the time, X was planning to launch a clothing line called Revenge. He had been looking for models for the clothing line, but he told the police that he and Jocelyn had not discussed modeling before she flew down, and he only hired her after she arrived. The visit, according to both the Flores family and X, was not intended to be professional, but instead romantic. On the second day of the visit, X had plans to accompany his cousin to prom. Going to prom. I never thought I was going to go to prom. Since I went to jail, you did. I went to jail instead, but hey, I got the opportunity. But thank you, you were blessing me. X left the apartment where they were all staying and made his way to the dance. Hours passed, and when he returned that evening, he noticed that he was missing around $7,000 in cash. And that's when everything began to fall apart. This was money that he had made from shows, and he had kept it inside the apartment in a bag. X interrogated both of the girls that were staying with him about the missing money, but neither Jocelyn or Zoe confessed. In his statement to the police, X said that each girl blamed the other, and tensions came to a head. Jocelyn claimed that Zoe had badmouthed X behind his back. This stirred the pot even more, and the argument escalated with the girls threatening to fight each other. At the time, 19-year-old X had only been out of jail for 61 days, and he was still very much on probation. He warned Jocelyn and Zoe that they couldn't fight in his apartment. He told them that they had to leave, and that he no longer wanted Jocelyn to model for revenge. According to three separate statements to the police, X offered to buy Jocelyn a plane ticket back to Ohio, but she rejected it. X then left the apartment to head to dinner. Jocelyn texted him in a panic, asking if he was serious and if she was really kicked out. Police report that the conversation ended with X informing Jocelyn that she couldn't stay with him any longer. The last text message between them was that night on May 13th at 10.35 p.m. This was the last conversation that they would have. 10 minutes later, Jocelyn was in the backseat of a car with two of X's friends, en route to the Hampton Inn. The men didn't know the girl at all. They'd only met her hours before. Later, they would tell officers from the Coconut Creek Police Department 
that they never even learned her name. The two young men and Jocelyn checked into the Coconut Creek Hampton Inn at 11.20 p.m. that night. In a sworn statement to the investigators, one of the men recalled driving to the hotel and chatting with his friend while the girl sat in the back seat, mumbling something about lesson learned. Upon arrival, they booked room 515 on the top floor, a mid-sized suite with two queen beds. Jocelyn arrived with a small red suitcase, wearing a black shirt, black sweatpants, and socks with sandals. She covered her black hair in a long blonde wig. The boys, who had no baggage, helped her into the room and left to get food. About 30 minutes later, the police report notes that one of them returned, noticed that Jocelyn was in the bathroom with the light on, texted a friend to hang out, and left again to go smoke. After 45 minutes, he came back to find the bathroom still lit up and locked from the inside. But it was late, he just smoked, and he was tired. He went to bed, fell asleep instantly, and didn't wake up until 7 a.m. Mother's Day morning. That's when he noticed the bathroom door was still shut, and it finally occurred to him to call for help. Within minutes, a hotel employee arrived with a screwdriver and slid the flat end behind the handle, unlocking the door from the outside. When the man saw the girl's feet overturned on the bathroom floor, he feared the worst, and a police officer would then confirm it about 15 minutes later that the girl, 16-year-old Jocelyn Flores, was dead. The death was immediately declared a suicide. According to Jocelyn's family, they would never hear from X or have the opportunity to talk to him about her last days alive, even though they had tried many times. But one week after Jocelyn's death, X started a live stream on Instagram. There was this girl that had, uh, had, had basically flew down here Great girl, beautiful girl, uh, wonderful personality, showed no signs of depression whatsoever. She, uh, in an in a unexplained, in a, unexp in a way unexplained, she, she killed herself when she came down here. I basically got on here today to kind of address her and her family uh, because I haven't been able to obviously contact her family personally. I'm basically on here to pay my condolences. Rest in peace, Jocelyn. My condolences to her family. Right now, I feel as if you all, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. This live stream was the only time that Jocelyn's family got to hear X talk about her death. And things would remain silent until several months later in August, when they would see Jocelyn's name being used as a title in one of X's songs. It would have been hard for the family not to have heard the song, because it hit number 31 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart shortly after being released. Then, less than a year later, when X was murdered, the song would make its way back onto the Billboard chart, peaking at number 19. The family had strong and mixed feelings about the use of Jocelyn's name for the song, but it seems like pretty much all of them agree that it would have been nice if he had asked for their permission, or at least reached out directly after the incident. This was a pretty heavy topic. What do you think of this situation? If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I post hip hop related content every week, so check out my other videos as well. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.